This is the first ever S model of an Audi electric vehicle, the e-tron S, in this case, the Sportback. Now, this vehicle costs about $15,000 more than the existing 55 Quattro e-tron, and what you get is a tougher looking car with firmer suspension and more performance. This does 0 to 100 in 4.5 seconds compared to 5.7 for the one below it, and it's things like that that make this the one to have, in particular the Sportback, because this body shape is what more people want than the SUV wagon. What makes the e-tron S different to a normal e-tron? It's fairly subtle, but there are some distinct changes. We have an S badge, obviously, at the front here. The e-tron S has its own front bumper bar section, different design, still has the air ducts in here that feed out through here, out through the arches and down the car. This Sportback is meant to have a 0.26 drag coefficient. When fitted with the fancy mirrors, this one has 22 inch wheels though, and probably doesn't quite achieve that, but it is about being aerodynamic. This car here also has a $1,600 black pack. So all of this stuff and the rim down here in front of the front splitter and the mirrors should all normally be silver, but in here they're gloss black. That's my personal preference, but perhaps not Tom's. Another aerodynamic piece in the e-tron S is that it has grill shutters in the front grill, which a lot of these EVs have. They close between 48 and 160 kilometers and only open when they need to, which is what you would expect. The e-tron S already has Matrix LED lights as standard, but it also offers digital Matrix LED lights, which is the first for an EV in Australia and is part of a $9,600 sensory package that also includes a heated rear seat and a Napa leather dashboard and a bunch of other oh, soft closed doors, but the lights are the star of the show. They have, I think, 1.3 million mirrors in them and can adjust like 5,000 times a second. That's the techie part of it. The other cool part of it is that it, the way it lights up the road, it has an orientation light that kind of puts a box light in the middle of the road and moves that around rather than just swinging the beam around. But it also does these really cool images that you can choose from in the MMI inside the car as your sort of follow me hind lights. When you lock the car or unlock the car, it does these cool little graphics, which is just a little bit of EV chic about it. The e-tron S also has slightly different styling on the side. These wheel arches front and back are 23 millimeters wider than the normal e-tron. Audi says it not only makes it look tougher, it also improves the aerodynamics because obviously there's little vents here to make the air flow through better across these massive wheels. These wheels are a $1,600 option. They're 22 inch Audi Sport 5-arm alloys. They're 21s standard. I think they look sensational. Another part of the e-tron S that signifies this from the normal e-tron and is going to be Audi's EVS signature going forward is orange calipers instead of red on the combustion engine cars. We've also got orange around the e-tron badge here on the charging flap and just the general chic of this Sportback, in my opinion, looks so much better than the wagon. I think that's probably why more Australians have chosen this body style than the SUV wagon shape. And if this e-tron S does what Audi says it does, they reckon that this will be the best selling variant in their EV e-tron lineup. At the back, the e-tron S has a few little subtle detail changes. It has this lip spoiler on the Sportback. It has a more pronounced spoiler on the tailgate in the SUV wagon version. It has a different diffuser down here. Again, here in gloss black, because we do have that $1,600 gloss black package. And also this cool lighting. I love Audi's lighting. This is with the lights on Parkers. They don't normally run at the back when the car's running, but they look sensational at night time. And it does have sequential indicators, which are really cool in my opinion. Towing wise, this can still tow 1800 kilos braked, which means it's roughly equivalent to what a medium SUV would be able to do. However, the e-tron S is not sized like a medium SUV. This weighs 2580 kilos, so it is big. And in terms of sizing in Audi's range, the e-tron actually sits closer to a Q7 than a Q5, although it's still a five seat like the Q5 is. Now, unlike a competitor such as the BMW iX, the e-tron S actually has an opening front bonnet with a modest amount of storage. Here we have this little flap that can take up to 80 kilos, which is here in this case, a whole bunch of cords, got a little carpeted mat on the floor here. This rather nice movement of this lid here. It's not much, but it's better than nothing. Now, as you'd expect, the e-tron S Sportback has a standard electric tailgate, as does the wagon version. 
It has slightly less luggage space than the SUV wagon. It has 660 litres below the luggage cover. This has 615, although that is still heaps. Now, as you'd expect in an Audi, it has this lovely polished trim thing here to stop scuffing. The carpet's beautiful. It has a standard luggage net. It has a 40-20-40 backrest that goes dead flat. But underneath here, it has a little surprise and delight feature in that it has a tray that is this deep and can be lifted out, I reckon, and used at barbecues because that says ice bucket to me 100%. As with the exterior styling, the interior of the e-tron S is very much about normalizing an EV experience and not making it too dorky. This is very much latest generation Audi design and aesthetic, and it works beautifully inside the e-tron. And I think the embellishment in the S just takes it to that next level. Things that make this stand out from the normal car is it has a proper S steering wheel and it's round, which we can all be very happy about. We have a S specific virtual cockpit in front with the view here thing we can change and have a different graphics to the normal car. We also have Valcona leather sports seats uh, this one with diamond stitching in grey, but can come in other colours, including red, and they're excellent. They only have heating, though they don't have cooling. They do have two-position adjustment with two memory buttons down here, but generally they're excellent. We also have a little S badge on this little leather section here, which kind of houses the little disc gear selector on the end, but also lets you rest your palm on there while you use these two screens here. Down here being the full touchscreen climate section, although with other bits and pieces you can touch, including uh, presets for the navigation. We've got a charge one here that shows you how much battery you've got left. There's a whole bunch of cheat sheets. There's also a car one here that you can press that lets you adjust the driver assist in a very quick and even an individual, much like the drive mode selection it gives you. It also gives you that for active safety, which I think is a really good thing. This stereo in here through this 12.3 inch touchscreen is a 705 watt 16 speaker Bang & Olufsen 3D surround sound system. It is really good. I wouldn't say it's absolutely the best I've ever heard in an Audi, but it is really good. It does sound pretty great, and it's the sort of thing you would expect to be standard in a car like this. The one thing this car is missing is Audi phone box, which includes wireless charging, which slots your phone vertically down in the centre here to create extra storage. That's because of semiconductors. It's also missing electric steering, column adjustment, and tire pressure monitoring. So those things are now in production for each one S's coming to Australia, but they're just not on this car right now. As for the rest of it, it's still pretty great. It's got a uh, storage down here, a little section here, two cup holders here. We've got Volkswagen and Audi's awesome armrest. This one in an infinite array of adjustment that goes up. Uh, two USB-C ports down here. Another little felt line storage tray here. Terrific storage in the doors. This camping bottle easily fits in here with a bit of room to move. And then I suppose it's just the general upholstery and trim in here. This car doesn't have the sensory package I mentioned earlier, which means it doesn't have a Napa leather dashboard. But all of this plastic in here still has some fake stitching on it and looks really good. The suede in the doors along here and across the lower section over there just adds a really nice level of difference in texture. We've all got proper door grabs in the front doors. This is really quite great and luxurious and it feels not too dissimilar to a normal car because the only thing that's really pointing at the fact that it is electric is that instead of having, say, a fuel can here for the charging here, you've just got a battery. And instead of going from full to empty, you've just got 100% to zero. I think what seals the deal in the e-tron S Sportback though is the back seat. Like, you wouldn't really think that about a performance coupe-ish SUV, but it really does work in here. This seat is outstanding. The base of the cushion is in a really good position. The backrest is completely hugging me like I'm in my own bucket. I have got tons of knee room, tons of foot room, just room everywhere and vision and I'm sitting behind myself here. And this seat in the middle here is actually kind of comfortable. It has an almost flat floor here. We also have two zone digital climate control in here. We have two USB-C ports down there with a 12 volt outlet. We have an armrest in the center here with another pair of cup holders and a little tray here with a little bit of fluffy carpety felt stuff in it. And we have this stuff, like it can take a full, it could take a 1.5 litre bottle in the door, actually. It has proper door grabs here. We've got the same suede as we did in the front doors with the same plastic finish. We've got another pair of air vents in the B pillars and just a general 
sense of luxury like this is a proper limo experience in the back of this car and we're in the coupe so i've still got quite a bit of headroom the sunroof does finish kind of early here but it leaves all of this extra space not quite the same as a wagon but really close and this standard panoramic sunroof just opens up the whole place i also like the fact that the roof lining is just dark gray and not black because i think black is always just a step too far but this is great the combined energy consumption figure for the Audi e-tron S Sportback is 23.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. However, we've averaged 31.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers in predominantly highway driving. Audi also claims an electric WLTP range of 370 kilometers for this body style. The warranty for Audi in Australia is now five years or unlimited kilometers, combined with a five-year paint warranty and a 12-year perforation and corrosion warranty. The recommended servicing for the e-tron S is every two years or 30,000 kilometers. However, you get six years free scheduled servicing when you purchase this car. The e-tron S can be charged from either the driver's side or the passenger side, but only the driver's side has both AC and DC charging. Now, this car is supplied with a 7.2 kilowatt hour Warbox charger, which can charge the e-tron S to 80% charge in 13 hours. However, if you pay $6,900, you can get a 22 kilowatt charger that does require three phase electricity at home, and that drops that down to four hours and 15 minutes. Using public chargers, the e-tron S comes with six years subscription to ChargeFox and can take up to 150 kilowatts of fast charging. It can go from zero to 80% in 30 minutes Minutes and zero to fully charged in 45 minutes. Now, the thing that sets the e-tron S apart from the normal e-tron, as you'd expect in an S model from Audi, is its increase in power and torque. It now has 320 kilowatts and 808 newton meters in normal mode, and when you pulse it into boost mode, which you do by accessing S in the transmission here, just in this little disc on the side here, it jumps to 370 kilowatts and 973 newton meters. And in that mode, it can do 0 to 100, as I mentioned before, in 4.5 seconds. And it's also capable of a 210 kilometer an hour top speed. So it does get there pretty quickly. It really does deceptively accelerate smoothly and sweetly and beautifully. Although it doesn't feel, again, neck slappingly quick but it is definitely a step up from the model that sits below it, which is the 55 Quattro that in boost mode does 5.7 seconds, 0 to 100. Now, Audi also claims that the e-tron S is the world's first EV to have two electric motors on the rear axle, and that's their claim, so let's believe it for now. Uh, that means that this e-tron S can have torque vectoring on the rear axle that operates in this EV just like a sport differential does in a normal S or RS model. So it sends drive to the outer rear wheel, helps the nose point into a corner. That torque vectoring works in conjunction with adaptive sports air suspension in this e-tron S that can raise and lower the car through a 76 millimeter range and automatically lowers it even further at speeds above 120 kilometers an hour. So combined with the 22 inch wheels in this car, it actually drives really quite smoothly. You never really think about the size of the rolling stock underneath here, I suppose, although you do have 2.6 tons to suppress whatever is going on underneath the e-tron S. It is actually a very smooth, suave, and comfortable electric SUV. I think more so than many of its competitors from other German brands at a similar price, although I have yet to drive the BMW iX. So there's an interesting comparison right there. Now we're going over a fairly lumpy road in the New South Wales snowy mountains, and we're just kind of pretty much gliding over it. I'm in auto, I'm not even in comfort. I can go into comfort here if I want to via the drive mode, and even then it is a little bit softer. It's better controlled than in the normal e-tron, but it's still a pleasant car to guide through corners. But where we want to challenge the e-tron S is to see how that torque correction goes in the really tight corners that the New South Wales Snowies are known for. In normal driving, the EV setup and the e-tron S is mostly rear wheel drive and it only sends drive to the front axle when it feels like it needs traction. This is the only other rear wheel drive Audi other than the R8 which is kind of cool. We're now in dynamic mode in what is really quite tight corners here. 
it doesn't feel analog to drive this car quickly it, the steering still does feel reasonably digital but there is definitely a balance to it and a cohesion to the way it flows through corners that kind of makes it quite sporty for an EV certainly an SUV EV behind slow moving traffic here use the power yeah from low speeds the punch of this S car really is quick it's only at speeds above 100 k's an hour where you feel like the EV isn't quite as punchy as before that's where that 4.5 not to 100 comes from although you do notice the weight of it when you're braking into these really tight corners there is a degree of physics still at play here despite the smarts of that all-wheel drive system the regenerative braking in the e-tron s isn't as extreme as it is in other evs you need to click this left paddle twice to get maximum and then you use the right paddle to remove that back to normal again and every time you touch the accelerator or the brake it resets which is not the same as everybody else's you do get used to it but you tend to drive the e-tron s quickly like you're driving a performance car on paddles and driving it quickly like this it really is deceptive because it's so quiet and we're on such a smooth road here and it's really really grippy on these 285 hand cooks that you'd have no idea how quickly you were going ultimately the e-tron s doesn't really blow you away with how agile it is but it's such a quiet achiever that it's not until you look down at the speedo in the head-up display in front of me here and see how quick you're going that you realize just how much pace this rather heavy electric SUV can carry and it does so with a really nice balance and a really good flow about it it's not a visceral car like the RSQ8 or any RS6 or anything like that this is a completely different experience but it's also a calming experience so if you can imagine calm blended with ultra rapid then you've got the e-tron s nailed in terms of safety the e-tron s is pretty great it has so much grip for starters so it's passive safety is really strong and it's really easy to place but it also has a lot of active safety stuff uh, i think in particular the thing that stands out about it is that its steering assist on the highway is completely livable and actually is quite helpful and adds a bit of weight to the steering that when you're driving in efficiency is really quite light and it's also turn offable by this little button on the end of a stall key like any other Audi one press and it's gone or one press and it's back which makes life so much easier than playing around with all these screens of which this has quite a few so now that we're going downhill in really tight corners you can kind of get a sense of just how low the batteries are in the e-tron it does feel very natural in the way that it corners but in this instance where physics and g-force is really kind of pushing it a bit you can feel that it's all down there which is great in an suv kind of as tall and heavy as this trailing brakes into corners the nose does really bite quite well it doesn't give you that sort of analog steering feedback that you might want but it is an ev i suppose and it's also not a sports car it's a suv so in that respect it's actually quite satisfying in a sort of a soothing calming refined kind of fashion certainly not an in-your-face deliberately overly sporty kind of way this is not trying to be a tesla model s it is trying to be a refined German luxury SUV and in that respect it is very much as you'd imagine how a Bentley would drive which is a good thing for the e-tron s if you like this car chasing cars can help you take the next step if you'd like to organize a test drive of the Audi e-tron s Sportback or download a brochure please click on the link below the video the thing about the Audi e-tron s Sportback is that it is not an in-your-face performance SUV about the most in your face this vehicle gets is that it's the first Audi S model to have pumped wheel arches which is normally reserved for an RS and here they look great but that's kind of what this car is about looking suave having a bit of swagger to it having a beautifully refined drivetrain and driving experience and also outstanding build quality to be honest like it has a beautiful interior this feels like a crafted piece of luxury but it is also an accessible performance SUV because 
It's handling is faithful. It is composed on the road. It's comfortable even in dynamic mode with the drive mode. That suspension can be as stiff as it can go. And this thing still gives you ride quality, which is great. About the only area where the e-tron Air Sportback isn't accessible is its price. It might only be $15,000 more than the normal 55 Sportback, but this car at 176,400 plus the two options I've already mentioned, so we're close to $180,000. That seems like a lot of money. Although I know that if you start optioning up a BMW iX, you're looking at at least the same amount of money, if not more. So does this fulfill the brief of a 180K luxury electric SUV? I think absolutely it does. It just depends on where that sits and your level of affordability because the desirability of this car is really quite high. About the only area where you could potentially pick on the e-tron S is its range with 370 kilometers WLTP. However, we've driven this car quite hard today and using the regen braking, it's got around 300 kilometers of range and it charges quickly. So I suppose you need to balance that out in your own usability of the car. But to me, it seems reasonably competitive if far from class leading. If you haven't subscribed, please do so below the video, hit the notification bell and tell us what you think about the Audi e-tron S Sportback or chasing cars. Thanks for watching.